All right, so let's talk about some decimals. And the first thing that we need to know is what the lady at the Verizon thing screwed up, which is simply place value. Where you put your place value is important. What the place value means is important. If we understand place value, we're much less likely to make a stupid mistake like that woman made. So if we look at this, before this section, we only had really whole numbers. We're going to add that decimal and put a whole bunch of numbers after that. Now, just like our numbers before the decimal, such as the 4, 5, 8, every number, every digit after the decimal has its own unique place value. By the way, do you remember what this place value is? Ones. Or ones. <clears throat> Good. So on and so forth, we, we go hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, then millions, and so on and so on. Remember doing that? We did it a while back, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when we go on the other side of the decimal, instead of the uhs, like ones, tens, hundreds, we have s. Can you all? Yeah, we have the s. I make the one with the t. S. The only thing is, there's no such thing as once. There's ones. There's such thing as once. Here's one. The first decimal right here, if you were talking about money, it would take 10 of these to make up $1, right? If it takes ten of those, we're going to call them tenths. There's no ones. Ones are ones. Okay, we already have that. We want tenths. So this place value right here starts with the tenths. Tenths. It all ends with a THS to the right of our decimal place saying they are fractions of a dollar. Here's what the tenths says. It takes ten of these to make up one whole. That's what it means. Ten of these to make up one whole. If we have three tenths right here. We need seven more units to create a whole value for us if we're just talking about the tenths. Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. The next one, it works very much like this side of the place value. Here we went ones, tens, hundreds. We're gonna, well, there's no ones, but there's a tenths. The next one is, what do you think? Hundreds. Hundreds, you're right. Hundreds. Here's what hundredths mean. Hundredths mean it would take 100 of this place value to get one whole value. Just like if you talk about pennies. If you talk about one penny, it's 0 .01. True? How many pennies are in a dollar? 100. 100. That's why it's one hundredth of a dollar. It takes 100 pennies to equal a dollar. That's what this place value does. So we have tenths, we have hundredths. What do you think the next one's going to be? Thousandths mean that it takes a thousand of the value in this place value to reach one. What that means for this, remember when that woman was talking about 0 .002 cents? She was talking about two thousandths of a cent. Two thousandths of a cent. It would take a thousand of those to make one cent. She was converted and saying a thousand of those would make one dollar. She was still talking about cents. She just didn't know it. The next one, likewise, you're going to get ten, ten thousands or thousandths? Thousands. Then we would get hundred thousandths, we would get millions last. And again, here's what millions mean. It means it would take a million, a million of these place values to equal just one, just one dollar. If so if you're talking about a millionth of a penny, 
it would take a million, a million of those units to equal just one penny. If you're talking about a millionth of a dollar, that's different. Take a million of these units to equal one dollar. You guys see the difference there? Okay. Hey, which one's bigger? 62 or 117? 117. Clearly 117. Why? Because <laughs> it's bigger. Sure. Because it's bigger. Now, here's another question. What's bigger? 62.000 or 117.0? What's bigger? 62.000 or 117.0? Wait a second. This has more zeros. Why? So these are whole numbers, right? Yes. This isn't even part of a, this is part of a whole number. So if I'm comparing these numbers, do the zeros after the decimal really mean anything at the back end? No. So if I if, if you had someone who thought that, you'd be like, I'm gonna pay you sixty two point zero 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 dollars a year. And you'd be like, dang man, I'm rich. That's awesome. If you thought those zeros meant something, right? But they don't. Yeah. That means you're getting 62 bucks a year. You're, you're going to be broke. That's it. Right? Those zeros after the decimal place at the end of the number, they don't change the value of that number. They're just parts of the whole. So really, I mean, even though that's a very long number, because we have the decimal place, the only thing that's counting for us as far as money in the pocket is just this part. You're going to have 558 whole dollars. The rest of this is just part of one dollar. It's a little more than 30 cents. That's it. Now, people struggle. People have a good time with this one, right? That, that's not, not a problem because you have whole numbers there. That's pretty easy to do. What I'm concerned with is, are you going to be able to find the difference between decimals? Such as, if I give you 0 0.693, 0 0.71, I need you to be able to figure out which one is bigger in that case where they have a decimal, there's no whole number, right? There's, there's just a zero, and that's why the zero's out there to show that you have a decimal somewhere. So here and here. The question is, which one is bigger? Is the 0 .693 bigger or the 0 .71 bigger? Okay, now why do you say that? Because you could put another zero on the top. Okay, so you could look at the, the first place value. That would be the tenths, right? Whatever has more tenths is a bigger number. Even though this one's a longer number, watch what you could do. You just recognize that the zero at the end of a decimal really doesn't do much, right? I get to add zeros on here all day long. It's not going to change the value of that number. <laughs> Couldn't I just add a zero here? No. Why not? Oh, yeah, I agree. So I could have 0 0.693 and 0 0.710. Are these the same values? Yes. Yes. Is this the same as that? Yes. Definitely. Is this the same as that? Yes. Which one's bigger now? It's easier to see when you're making the same length. So one way we can quickly see what decimal is bigger, make them the same length by adding zeros onto the end. Then you can just ignore that decimal. What number is bigger, 710 or 693? 710. Make them the same length. Then you can look at the actual length of the numbers as value. So add zeros until the place values are even. zeros. We're going to make the place values equal. Make the number of place values equal. Add zeros and make the number of place values equal. Then you can just compare the length of the, the actual values of those numbers. Essentially, you'd be multiplying by 1,000 here. And it's going to tell you that whatever number is bigger in this situation dictates whatever number is bigger in that situation. So if the 0.710 is bigger than 0 0.693, 0 0.71 is bigger than 0 0.693 as well. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good. 
Well, we're going to continue our talk about decimals and the introduction to decimals by trying to put some numbers in order. Now, what we learned from last time, the last little bit from our, our first set part of this section, is that if we want to determine which number is bigger according to, de to decimals, we can add zeros onto the end of the, the number, and it really doesn't change the value. For instance, I, I said 62 and 62.000 really don't make a whole lot of difference. If you have $62 or $62.0, do you have any more when you do 62.0? No. Oh. You still have 62 bucks in your pocket. That's the same idea. So we can add zeros onto the end of our decimal and not change the value of our number. What that allows us to do a lot of times is put numbers in order pretty easily. So let's go ahead and look at this example here. We've got 1.01, 1.2, 1.002, 1.1, 1.12. We want to figure out what's the biggest to the smallest numbers. Now, right now it's a little confusing because we have lots of different lengths of numbers. One idea is let's make all these numbers the same length. So we'll add on zeros to make all of these the same length number. Our longest number, not necessarily our biggest number, but our longest number is 1.002. So I want to make this so it's point something, something, something. I want that length of three. So in our first case, instead of 1.01, I could make it 1.010. Do we agree that's the same value? Yes, no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Then the 1.2, I can make that 1.200. Again, I'm trying to match up the length of all these numbers. 1.002, that's already the length that I want. I want the three decimal places. I don't need to add anything onto that number. 1.1, how many zeros do I need to add there? Two. Okay. And then the 1.12, that's only missing one zero at the very end. You all right with that one? Yes. So we're just adding zeros at the end of it. It's not changing the value, but it's making it just a little bit easier to identify what's the biggest number, then the next biggest, and the next biggest. You see, the thing about it is, if we have all the numbers the same length, according to de the decimal, we can look at the value the value of these numbers without the decimal, pretend it's not even there, and then pick out the biggest number. It's pretty easy as far as, far as that goes. So when we look at this, we go, okay, instead of thinking of 1.01, think about it as 1,010. Think about it as 1,200, 1,002, 1,100, 1,120. Then you can pick out the biggest number and write that appropriately. Are you with me? So what's the biggest number that we have? 1.2. Yeah, this one was. So we're going to write 1.2 first. And that's the largest though? Oh, did I say that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, good call. I, I meant largest to smallest, I wrote the smallest to largest, so let's stick with the smallest to largest. What's the smallest number then? Oh, 1.002. Yeah, we look at the smallest number here, that's going to translate to the smallest number here. Very good, 1.002. We got that one. Can you tell me after the 1.002, what number is just slightly bigger? 1.01. Yeah, we look at the rest of these four. This one's the next one. It's like 1,010. So we're going to put the 1.01. We're going to write what, it, what we signified this as. Why are you crossing them out? So I don't repeat them. What's the next smallest number? 1.02. But which one? 1.2? No, 1.12. 1.12? No, 1.12. 1.12. No, 1. 1. 1. This one's like 1100. This one's like 1120. So the zeros don't matter, huh? 1. 1. At the very end, after the decimal, no. 